Let me bring you back to when I was about 13 or 14 or something like that. In Sweden, when you go to school, we have this program called uh, Workspace Experience. It's called Prau in Swedish. That means that you get to choose a workplace that, where you go to and experience what it is to be in a job as a grown-up. And I decided to go to an Audi dealership. And that experience was one of the most fundamental experiences when it comes to my passion for cars and car design because I remember one of the workers just taking out a red B5 RS4 and he was taking it to get washed or get fuel or something like that very short drive I remember pulling out of the dealership and I saw this red beautiful RS4 with the obvious wheels looking great and then he stepped on it and the entire rear end just slammed to the ground as the Quattro all-wheel drive system pushed the 380 horsepower down to the ground. And from that moment, I've always loved Audi wagons, spe specifically Audi performance wagons. And now, this car, the 2025 Audi RS6 Avant GT, is extremely special to me. It's almost magical, because if I were to redesign the RS6 Avant, this is exactly how I would do it. So we have a few very subtle changes in this design. I'm going to walk you through all of them. We're going to compare the regular RS6 uh, Avant to the RS6 Avant GT. And I'm going to show you all the design differences. And it's been designed by one of my favorite designers of all time, which is Jürgen Loeffler of Audi. When I was a design student in Italy in 2010, 2011, I looked at his sketches for inspiration and uh, sort of build my own style around his style of sketching. So I'm glad to see that he was part of this design. Before we jump into Photoshop and have a look at, the, at this design, I'm letting, from the front side and rear interior, I'm going to show you the differences of the regular RS6 Avant GT. Let's have a look at what this car actually is. What is this thing? What is this beautiful... Uh, Audi that we have here. So the 2025 Audi RS6 Avant GT brings distinctive IMSA GTO look to the street. And this is an article from Car and Driver. I'm going to link it down in the description. So you have twin spoilers and distinctive white painted wheels, which are so beautiful that I, I just can't stop staring at, at this design. You have Audi 621 uh, horsepower high performance wagon. Uh, will be uh, limited to 660 units and out of those 85 are coming to the US and Canada. The limited edition wagon takes after the iconic Audi 90 Quattro IMSA GTO race car from their uh, late 80s and early 90s. And here you can see what that original race car looks like. Super cool design. Such a... Look at how planted this is with these deep dish wheels. Looks so cool. And I think this is a proper modern rep representation of what this used to be. Even though this is an Avant, which I think is even cooler. At the front of the new Audi GT, there is a new grille. Even though it's very hard to see. But as I said, I'm going to show you the details that have been changed. Uh, you have an air intake is now finished in gloss black. There is also a more aggressive front splitter, which is one detail that, that it just completely transforms this design. And I said that when, the fir when I first saw the RS6 Avant when it came out, that there are a couple of things in the rear end and in the front that I'm not so sure about. And exactly those things seems to be what has been redesigned for the Avant GT. So the Avant GT's hood and front fenders are completely redesigned as well and now finished in uh, carbon fiber. This has a very similar look for the carbon fiber strips that we have on the hood. But you, you, there are two ways you can do it. You can do it in a more static way. For example, like the BMW does with the BMW M3 and M4s. Or you could do it in a more automotive and dynamic way, which is the way Audi has done it here. And you can probably tell which one I prefer. So you have the decals that come in three designs. And these are the only designs you can have for the Avant GT, which I think is great. The first one, which is shown here, pairs Arcona white with Audi, Spar Audi Sports black, gray and red. Looks great. The second, third option pair Nardo gray and Mythos black with gloss black and matte black wheels respectively. There is no doubt in my mind which one I would pick. I would pick this one that we have here in this in these press photos, the white and the white wheels. 
In the interior is pretty similar to what we have on the regular RS6 Avant. The black interior is heavily accented with a combination of red and copper stitching. And you also have exclusive set, exclusive set of carbon fiber bucket seats up front. You have the same powertrain as the regular RS6 Avant, which I think is completely fine because that is a monster already. And this is more of a, an homage when it comes to the exterior design. And that is exactly what I appreciate about this car. So you have 621 horsepower and 627 pound-feet of torque uh, uh, sent through the quattro all-wheel drive system in an 8-speed automatic. You also have a locking center differential and it comes standard with a set of adjustable coilover shocks lowering the car almost half an inch compared to the standard RS6 Avant. The final assembly is made by hand for this specific very special model and it will go on sale in Germany for the equivalent of just under $235,000 and Audi said deliveries will begin in spring. Now who cares about all the spec and tech here? What I want to talk about in this case is the design because have a look at how stunning this design is. And this is one of these cars, more on this in the side view later on, but this is one of these cars that when you have the right wheels on the car, it just can completely transform the everything, the stance and the proportion, everything changes when you have the right offset and the right size of wheels on your car. Now looking at the front end here of the regular RS6 Avant up top obviously and down low we have the RS6 Avant GT. You can see that when this first came out I wasn't too sure about these angles that we have going up and creating this triangle which doesn't necessarily feel like it's fitting in the overall design of the front end. We still have the single frame grill here which I think looks great and this is a huge grill but the thing is Audi has a uh, an ability to make the big grills feel like they are, are supposed to be that big and proportionally it looks great and the reason why I love car design so much compared to industrial design and there was no doubt in my in my mind that I wanted to focus on car design when I was a student and not industrial design that is because cars to me have when you look at a car specifically from the front end it has a personality and it says something to you it, it shoots out some sort of emotion to you that uh, normal products or consumer electronics just don't do they don't do it in the same way and you build a relationship with your cars and that is what I think this car is all about so looking at the uh, RS6 Avant GT specifically in this lower area right here we do have this front splitter that goes across the entire length the, the, no ups and downs nothing like that and we have this then hugging the road coming back in the side view as well with the side skirt you can see that this triangle with this up angle that we have in the normal RS6 Avant is now straight so you go straight at the bottom straight down here and this to me is a tiny little tweak to this design but it makes a, a, a massive difference for how I perceive this design and then you also have some rally inspired uh, details here for example these three intakes up top in the hood this is from the Ur Quattro rally car you have sort of similar design down here at the bottom and I do love that they made this portion of the front end black blacked out because it just removes some of the mass of the front end uh, of the car and we also have a, a mesh pattern that looks to be a little bit bigger these holes looks to be a little bit bigger than we have in the RS6 Avant, the regular version. Overall, just a front end, just a stunning design. And here you can see these carbon fiber uh, exposed pieces that have much more of a fluid. It feels like someone actually sketched these out by hand. I think that is the difference between these carbon fiber pieces or strips that we have in this Audi compared to the M3 and the M4 CSL for example which have very static looking looks like they were 3D models from from scratch instead of sketched out by hand to start with that is not the case with the Audi RS6 and I also love the the um, lighting techniques and designs that Audi has been doing since the original Audi R8 back in 2007 now looking at the side view here proportions 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 it's just a, a gorgeous, gorgeous looking uh, wagon, this Audi. I think the, with the RS6 GT Avant, they, I think they took the top spot when it comes to proportions 
in a wagon. And the thing is, if you look at the wheels here on the regular RS6 uh, Avant, they, they don't look bad at all. They look really cool, bronzed out with this uh, gray exterior of, of the body itself. But when you bring in some history and some heritage into this, this is what really hits the spot for me with this obvious uh, six uh, spoke wheel designs because these are the wheels that uh, that were on the Audis at the time when I fell in love with car design so that's why they mean so much to me on the original uh, Audi RS4 we had them there we had them on the S8 specifically and also the S3 the S8 and the S3 had more similar style to what these are with these things on on the very end of the spokes super simple design looks great in white in combination with this decal package that I think is another level, just adds another level to this design. And these wheels are 22s. We have 22s in the front and in the rear. We don't have a strange staggered setup. We have 21s in the rear, 20s in the front, 22s in the rear, 21s in the front. Here, let's just keep it simple. Let's just put 22s all around exactly like I wanna see. And also you can see that we have this beautiful double wing in the rear end a lot more aggressive than what we have on the normal rs6 avant up here also again adding just it, it doesn't ruin the design it doesn't take away from the design it doesn't do anything but add to the sportiness of the rs6 avant gt looking at the rear end there are a couple of changes back here in addition to the wing which you can see more clearly right now up here. This double wing where the air flows through here and then shoots out right here. You also have this diffuser with a couple of wings here at the very bottom where air comes out and then shoots out up here, creating more downforce and sucking the rear end to the ground. But just have a look at these wheels from this angle. Just a stunning, stunning design. Now the diffuser itself, this was also one, one detail that I made a redesign on when the RS6 Avant first came out. I wasn't sure about the, this line. It looks too brutal to me and too vulgar to me, this diffuser. And you can see that they have redesigned this uh, design now into be still the same outline is exactly the same, but we don't have this line cutting through the entire diffuser. Instead, this line now goes right here and then cuts across and then dips all the way down. It doesn't go in this weird angle across here like we have in the regular um, RS6 Avant. And I think this makes it look more, uh, sort of more industrial, but also more purposeful and more effective in, in what it's supposed to do. And I'm glad that Audi, of course, kept their big RS exhaust pipes down here because that is a, a you know, a, a trademark for Audi RS models to have these huge bazooka oval exhaust pipes. And the M section of BMW have the quad exhaust pipe round. Audi has, going back a long time, has always had these oval ones looking really cool. Now, last but not least, the interior, not no, no huge changes here for the RS6 Avant GT compared to the RS6 Avant which is up top. Audi is doing fantastic interiors as well. The only thing that I would like to change here, specifically in the RS models, we have a lot of gloss black in these cars. And I reviewed the RS6 Avant a while back, and I said the same thing there. When, you're, when you sit in this car, in, in, car in, in person with the car, this is too glossy for me, specifically in an RS model. Maybe we can have it in the A6, is fine. But here I would much rather have it be a more matte surface, maybe even have this entire panel be carbon fiber but you can see just how beautifully integrated the gauge cluster uh, the in infotainment screen is here and we also have a completely separate unit completely separate from the infotainment screen is the climate control settings down here in addition to a traditionally integrated gauge cluster in which you can have the entire map on the screen should you choose to have that or you can have the performance dials like we see here in the rs6 avant gt fantastic interior with a couple of changes and tweaks that i want to do to the material choices but other than that, the entire car, the RS6 Avant GT, $235,000, I think this car is worth it. It's going to be a collector's item. And honestly, just the fact that they put the old Avus wheels on this car is worth a lot to me.